Hello, everybody. I'm Hannah Hostick, co-president of the Friends of the Sterling Road Library. It's our pleasure to welcome you all here today on this gorgeous Sunday uh, in South Florida. Um, what could be better than learning about who we are as a city um, while enjoying the weather. I hope some of you are sitting outdoors and enjoying this while listening. Um, we've got some great programs at the library, still all being held virtually. Uh, we hope that you'll check out our website. I'll post it on the chat and see what's coming up. Um, but we are delighted to offer another program in partnership with the Hollywood Historical Society, one of our all time favorite partners. And with no further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Karen Albertson, who is the director of the Hollywood Historical Society. I'd also like to remind you that everyone should make sure their mics are turned off. Please feel free to leave your cameras on if you'd like and um, enjoy our program. Karen? Thank you. Hi, I'm Karen Albertson, the Executive Director of the Hollywood Historical Society. Welcome on this beautiful sunny day. I know we'd love to be outdoors, but maybe again sometime. Uh, today, you will um, have a change of our schedule. We're going to have a tour of the Hammerstein House by the directors, my, the board of directors, our quilter lady had to leave town because of COVID, she closed her business. So I got the board together and now you're gonna see a virtual tour of the home of Clarence and Vera Hammerstein, which is located at 1520 Polk Street, Hollywood, in front of our research center. The house has been closed for the last few years. Usually we have uh, tours and uh, it's been closed because of COVID. This presentation will be by our Hollywood Historical Board of Directors, and they will answer any of your questions after the presentation. Thank you for joining us today, and note that our next lecture, June 13th, is by one of our uh, ex-president of Hollywood and volunteer, Mary Beth Busatil. It's going to regard, be regarding the architecture of Baird Lucan in Hollywood. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Clive, start the video. Um, are you sharing the screen with me, Hannah? You're muted. You're the co-host, you get to share your own screen. Okay. Just share screen on the bottom. Um, yep. Okay, everybody get ready for a fabulous tour. Live, can I do anything to help? Uh, no, can people hear us? With the, they can hear us, but your tour has not begun. Oh, it's but it's begun on my screen. No, no, we're still Spring. looking. It says share screen and it just says Hammerstein House Tour. Oh, okay. Could we all click on that? <laughs> Hold on. Um, <laughs> so do you see my, you don't see my screen? It says you are screen sharing. Right, and it says, 
You've checked Hammerstein house tour, but it has not begun. Nothing is happening. That's weird because it's playing on my end here. Okay. Um, I thought everybody was watching it. That's why I was not saying anything. No, we were all being very polite. <laughs> okay, hold on. Un momento, por favor, senor and senoras. Um, hmm. Okay, so do you see, what do you see on your screen now? I, I see um, where you're pointing to Hammerstein House Tour. Okay, I'm gonna click on it. Okay, did not click properly yet. Is it playing? No, you have okay. to like double click. It's playing on my computer. It's not playing with everyone else. That is reason. very strange. Okay, but we'll work it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Um, what could I... Maybe if I move this, I have it on an external hard drive. Maybe that is the problem. So let me move it back to my desktop. So let me see if I can do that here. That might be the problem. Um, Clive, here's some yeah. advice. Go on. One yeah, minute. Can you stop sharing and then um when you click share screen again if you share your whole screen right now you're only sharing the file explorer okay let me stop sharing okay let me share screen so when i hit claire share screen it's got all these different screens yeah do, do you see the powerpoint on it or the presentation on it no, because I moved it to my desktop. Oh, can you open the desktop, that PowerPoint from your desktop? I can. Let me go to that. And it's not, it's, um, it's not a PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. It is a, um, it's a movie file. Let's see. Okay, so okay. I'm going to open it now. Okay, so now it's starting to play. So if you pause it. I paused it. And now when you go back to Zoom, when you click share screen, one of the windows should be that movie file, hopefully. Okay, share screen. It is not. It's not showing up? No. Hmm. If you click, uh, if you just click share, and it should share your entire screen, hopefully. Um, okay. so, what do uh, you guys see? Your movies and TV. So it's your previous movies. Okay, so I'm going to minimize that. Now, what do you see? My desktop? Your whole desktop, exactly. Okay, you see where it says Hammerstein House Tour? Uh huh. I'm going to click on that. Are you, now, do you get it? Yep. yep. It's perfect. I had to, I must have had to put it back on the hard drive. It was on an external drive. Okay, good. Hey everyone. A yeah. shout out to Joe Hostick. Thank you, Joe. Bye. Uh, Clive, the video the audio is not working, but the video is beautiful. Um, let me turn it up. Can you hear it now? Nope. Now, yes, I think. Clive, it's very unclear. It's unclear? I mean, I don't really hear sounds. Uh, if they're talking, we're not hearing them. That's odd because it's coming through my speakers like really loud. Okay, no one else can hear it. Oh, man. Um, and I have my volume over here all the way up. Okay. Let me unplug my, um, I 
I can handle it. Kevin, where would I write a message? Everyone needs to turn off their mics because we're trying to work out the problem. Did you did you hear it just now when I played it? Nope. Okay, I don't know why it's playing on my computer. The sound, mm -hmm. the audio is fine. I don't know why it's not coming through. There's, can that technical guru have an answer for that? One second. Um, um, can you stop sharing? And then okay. when you click, when you click share screen again, mm -hmm. there's a button on the bottom left that says share sound. Can you click that? Okay, so I'm back to not sharing and I see the share screen. Exactly. And when you click share screen on the bottom left of that pop up window. Oh, share. Man, this guy is good. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> right on. You got to be with us all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I click mm -hmm. that. So um, mm -hmm. now I'll share the screen. Is it, uh, why isn't it sharing now? Mm -hmm. Oh, share, okay, here we go. All right, everybody see the beginning again? Yes. Okay, okay let's try this again. I want a big hoop and holler if it sound um, works. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Hey. Welcome Perfect. to the house of the Mango King, which was Yay. owned by Clarence and Vera Hammerstein. It was built in 1935 by architect Baird Lucan. Come Let's inside. go inside. Please come in to this lovely home, which was built in 1935 for Clarence and Vera Hammerstein by architect Baird Lukens. Lukens called the style tropical modern. As we go through this beautiful house, look at the details of the interior, including the decorative Cuban and Spanish tiles, many of them selected by Vera herself while traveling. Here in the living room, please notice the needlepoint chairs, which were crafted by Vera herself and her loving mother, Mary Rust. Over the fireplace, we have portraits of Clarence and Vera Hammerstein, set off by the notched design, which is duplicated at the stairway. The brown leather chairs we see did belong to the Hammersteins themselves. They are truly originals. Hello everyone, I'm Victor DiBianchi. I'm on the board of directors of the Hollywood Historical Society. I had the honor of serving as Mr. Hammerstein's guardian and personal representative and I knew the family very well since I was a young boy. And I'm here to show you the parlor. This is the Tiffany cabinet about 150 years old, with harp glasses here, which the Hammersteins had made solely for themselves, so no one else can have the same copies. These chairs here are almost 200 years old, anywhere from the 1820s to the 1850s. We can't actually place the date. The rugs are original. This is Mrs. Rust, who was Vera's mother, who lived here with the Hammersteins for a long time until her death. Uh, Vera, Mrs. Hammerstein, did pass away before Mr. Hammerstein. I had the honor of being his guardian and his personal representative during his lifetime, and he lived to be about 92 years old. He was one of the founding members of the Kiwanis Club of Hollywood. Everything here with the Hollywood Historical Society for the Hammerstein House has been restored. And this sofa is the same. Of course, this TV is from the 1960s, 
and uh, it's in beautiful condition and it still works and it's an honor to be here to speak to all of you um, some of this some of these items might be stolen from some of the uh, uh, restaurants or hotels in Hollywood Florida from the 30s and the 40s the Hammersteins moved here in 1935 to be near the Ray family uh, which are Flamingo Gardens um, because they were very, very dear friends. But the Hammersteins were kleptomaniacs and they were outlawed from many of the hotels and the restaurants oh in the city of Hollywood. And it's the truth. And I loved him dearly and I miss him even though it's been so long. And I want to make a little toast to Vera and Mr. Clarence Hammerstein, to Mr. and Mrs. Rust who did have all the money, and God bless. We are entering the Florida room where most of their collectibles they collected on all their trips. This was a little Florida room, and this room has all of the original windows in the house. Here is a picture of the house, what it looked like before, the reason this was changed, Mrs. Hammerston did like to go in the back and get wet when she went to her car. So they opened this wall and built a garage so she didn't get wet getting out of the car. These are all of the trip people, these are all the people they visited on trips. And these are the buttons are all of the cities they visited. And we have pictures too. And these are Mr. and Mrs. Hammerstein. They wanted to stay in the house. And they are. They uh, couldn't find her ashes until Mr. Hammerstein died, Victor told me. And they found them in the house. And that's, they're up there now. And she had a penguin collection. And Mr. Hammerstein uh, did a lot of work with mangoes. He, they started floor, uh, Flamingo Gardens with Floyd Ray, Frank Sterling, and Clarence Hammerstein. It's a beautiful place. It's got a lot of information on Hollywood, all about the mangoes, developing different uh, strains of mango. That was his specialty. And it's very interesting in his name and Hollywood's name is all in that cottage out there. And these were made by, I believe, some local people. I know one man was named Hans. He used to do a lot of this old German man did these cast things and they did the numbers for the houses. You know, when you write your, they had a tree and then your 2542, your house number. But these are original and they're very collectible. And the floor, it's tile, Cuban tile. And all of the tile going up the stairs to the second floor, all the little inserts were things she collected on her travels. But look at these plates and all the artifacts from all over the world. And she brought back a lot of linens and flags and artwork. Isn't that interesting? They entertained a lot in the holidays and I saw the pictures. I wasn't here. They would take their Christmas cards and line them up on the Venetian blinds and every inch of this was covered with greeting cards and I believe we still have a few in there in the house. This is a picture of Clarence and Vera Hammerstein and she's wearing her Vera dress, which you will see upstairs. We have it laying on the bed. It's one of the best pictures of the two of them. Now come with me and I will show you the two rooms upstairs and the bathroom and the inserts. These two particular lights are one of the few original to the house. There's one more up at the top of the steps that is original too. And these are the inserts 
of tile that she picked up on her travels. Wherever she'd go, she'd pick up a few tiles. And when they built the house, Mr. Geisen put them in. This is our memorabilia room. These are about people and awards he got up here. And here's a lovely picture of Mr. Hammerstein. I think it was a proclamation. You could see it there. And there's a lot of awards from people in the state governors. These are all awards that he got. And this is memorabilia that people gave us and we found ourselves about Hollywood. And, and then we have this and it's a very good uh, replica of what Hollywood was in the 20s made by one of the telephone employee friends of Marion Fordings. Their name was Johnson. And this is Vera and Hammerstein's personal things. Here's his gloves, his goggles, his hat, and there's a picture of him. And all these, here's her gloves, her handbags, there's, this is an address book that expands, cigarette boxes, a little award, and here's another picture of him in his World War I uniform. He was a Kiwanis, every service group he was involved in. Then we'll go into the other room. Okay, and I wanna tell you about this little stand. This is where the telephone sat for upstairs. And they had, if, I think this was from the phone company and you could bring it to let them know there was something going, there was a call up here. And there was a one downstairs too. Did you see the one right here? That little niche, do you see it? That's where there was a telephone too. Uh, and of course the archway. That was uh, Baird Lukens. And the closet. A large closet, very large, for this, people had them at half this size, and the floors are all wood, excellent. And these are pictures that they collected, there's the orig other original lamp. This is an original lamp. They don't have these anymore. And Mr. Hammerstein was involved in the Shriners, Masons, Air Force, and Co of course, Kiwanis was his big show, big. And uh, that's all his. And this is another uniform he had. Very nice. And he's got a book here that he wrote notes about people. And a lot of people come in and looked at the notes about different people. They said, oh, I know, that was my cousin or my uncle. Very interesting. And this is her, Mrs. Hammerstein when she was young and Mr. And this is when they have, I don't know how old they were. And I don't know about these pictures. There's somebody in Indiana. And they, this is their twin beds. And they used to have their, she was in the Red Cross and he was in another organization. The hats used to be on the bed. I don't know what happened to them. Vera was an officer in the Senate and deeply interested in education. She regularly visited elementary schools to describe the people and costumes in the many countries which she and her husband visited. But this was their furniture. And this is the Vera dress that she wore everywhere. And it's made, we found out it's made out of wool. Sue Gillis from the, Fort, from the Boca Raton Historical Society documented that for us. And then there's a little patio, but we don't use it now. They used to have coffee and stuff out here. And it, of course, you know, there wasn't a lot of greenery, but they don't use it now. And all their closets, I want to show you something in the bathroom. 
This was, these were redone in the 50s. It had these, both bathrooms, upstairs and downstairs. And look, at a closet in a bathroom was rare in those days. So they had that beautiful, beautiful tub. And the look at the light fixtures. You don't find them like that anymore. And the doorstop, I know it's strange, but it's, it's, it's made out of tile with a rubber knob on it. So when you hit the door, it doesn't break. It's crazy, but it's cute. There. But it's really nice. And these light, I'm not gonna turn the water on, but you turn the faucets and you it goes like that. There's no, you know, pull it up, pull it down. It's a, and they still make these. Now you wanna let the water out, you lift it up. The dining room table has fine china that was made for Mr. Hammerstein's father, Joseph. The set of fine china was handcrafted by Theodore Haviland of Limoges, France. The china is dated Christmas 1918. Around the table, we have additional chairs with needlepoint crafted by Vera and her mother. And over here, we have a beautiful china cabinet and other beautiful pieces of china. The kitchen is in pretty much its original condition. The cupboards contain a fine example of 20th century glass and chinaware which is all owned by the Hammersteins. We have these beautiful blue glasses and, and a beautiful tray, these beautiful tea sets. Also, underneath, they have these racks that were built in to hold larger platters. This excellent looking cabinet above the refrigerator. And over here, we have a fine example of the old kitchen utensils they used, and a built-in cutting board. And as we leave the kitchen, I would love to show you the old washing machine, the SS Holland, that was used by the family. I'm Clive Taylor, president of the Hollywood Historical Society, and I would like to talk to you guys today about the Mango King, the Mango Monarch, and the king of all things, Mango. Clarence Hammerstein was a bit of a pioneer when it comes to mango production and cultivation in South Florida. He's not as much known for that in our local area as he is for donating his wonderful home and being involved in Joseph Young's Hollywood selling real estate back in the early uh, mid to late 20s. And what happened was after the hurricane and the subsequent depression and the stock market crash, he had to find something else to do and he found a passion in the mango fruit. And the man that's responsible for introducing him to the mango fruit is none other than David Fairchild a world-renowned botanist that imported 20,000 different varieties of plants and um, fruits into the United States, many of which come to Florida. And uh, the Fairchild Tropical Gardens are named after him. Uh, so Clarence Hammerstein gets introduced to the mango. He gets together with some of his buddies, Frank Sterling of Sterling Road and Floyd L. Ray, and they form Flamingo Groves out in Davie in the early 30s, which was you might as well had been on the other side of the country because back then there was nothing out there that was a perfect place to start growing things. So they started out doing orange groves and then Ham discovers mangoes and falls in love with the mango and then gets inter interested in growing mangoes at Flamingo Groves, which eventually becomes Flamingo Gardens. And the reason it's called Flamingo Groves is because when they purchased the land, there was flamingos already on the property, so that's where it got its name. Clarence got so involved in the mango horticulture that he traveled the world 
twice. He circled the planet two times, once above the equator and once just south of the equator in search of the perfect mango variety. He introduced a lot of new varieties of mangoes to South Florida, and he visited every mango producing country on the planet. Um, he's also responsible for uh, cultivating and creating a new mango variety that was actually named after him. There is a mango out there, and that my quest right now is to find out where it is. It's called the Hamango, spelled H-A and then mango. So there is a variety of mangoes named after Clarence Hammerstein somewhere in this town and in South Florida. Uh, newspaper reports said that seed orders for this particular mango at the time were backlogged three years. And I'm not certain, but we have a mango tree on the property, and it's a very large tree, and we think it could be close to 80 years old, and I have a feeling this could be the fabled Hamango. So I have been in touch with Fairchild Tropical Gardens because they are the holders of mango culture and history, and we are gonna get to the bottom of this Hamango mystery. While Hammerstein was being interviewed numerous times about mangoes, he said it's the world's oldest known fruit and that it was actually the fruit in the Garden of Eden, that it was not the apple. And it kind of makes sense because apples grow up north where it's very cold. Adam and Eve are traipsing around in some tropical wonderland. You wouldn't find an apple there, but you might find a mango. So his theory was, and this is what he's quoted in the paper as saying, that when Eve convinced Adam to take a bite of that fruit, it was actually a mango and God didn't like what happened, so he told him, man, go, and pointed to the gate. And that's where he said the mango origin started in the Garden of Eden. So, you know, Ham is known for a lot of things in our civic involvement. He was on the Kiwanis Clubs, he was in World War I, he was really involved in a lot of things, but I think this part of his history is most interesting to me, especially that we've discovered there's a mango out there named for him and our mission is to find it. And I'd like to thank you guys for visiting us today. We are open in the winter. You can visit our website and uh, visit the research center, which is the building right here. Um, our researchers are there from Tuesday to Friday. If you call and make an appointment, they will help you find out any information that you're seeking about the history of Hollywood in case you bought an old house or you're just doing some research. They are happy to help and we're happy to see you. And thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming to the Mango King's home, the Hammerstein House. Cheers to the Hammersteins. Cheers. Mango Kings. Clive, do you want to unmute? Uh, yes, I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, if anyone has questions about the tour, I'm sure Clive and Karen and other members of the Hollywood Historical Society are available to answer them. Anyone have a question? Clive, I, ha I actually have a question. Can how, right now? Can anyone go yet, or how do you arrange to go on a tour? Our the Hammerstein House is currently still closed because of the COVID, but and we do close in the summer, so we will we will anticipate opening this fall. We're um, in the planning stages of planning a historic bicycle tour in Hollywood, and it's going to leave from the Hammerstein house. So part of the bike tour will include a tour of the Hammerstein house as well. So mm -hmm. we're gearing up for um, this action that we're finally gonna be able to have contact sports as some people like to call it in person. So it will be open soon. Okay, we have another question. Where did they live before Hollywood and how did they make their money? That, that. I, I believe they, they lived in Indianapolis. That's where I believe Floyd L. Ray was from and a lot of other people that came to Hollywood because Joseph Young came to Hollywood from that area. Um, it's not clear what they did for money. He sold real estate for Young and then he got involved in the mango horticulture. I don't know that 
they actually worked. I think there was some family money and maybe Victor and Joan could answer that. Isn't that correct, Victor? Yes, Vera's parents had the money. They were very wealthy. Um, I believe Dr. Joan will know better than me, but I believe that he was a builder in Indiana and that's how he got involved. And that was one of the reasons why Joseph Young took him here. And I did forget to mention, and I jogged my memory when I saw his military uniforms, he was a fire uh, a firefighter pilot with Eddie Rickenbacker through the Eddie Rickenbacker um, causeways named after. Hmm. Yeah, he had the rank of second lieutenant in the Air Force. I guess they're typical of people from Hollywood. We're never really sure of the source of their income for anyone here. So um, anyway, um, we had another question. How old was Vera when she died? Does anyone know? I can answer if, let me just do the math backwards. She was, uh, he lived about 12 years after her. They were the same age. She was just about 80 years old. Okay, and we have a correction or a, a clarification that um, Mr. Hammerstein didn't really work for Young because he, oh, because Young only came in 19. Oh, Hammerstein. I'm sorry, Joan. I think I screwed up your what you were yeah. trying to say. Joan? Um, Joseph Young started the city in 1920, and by 1925, it was extremely uh, built up. There were 25,000 people, and so the Hammersteins came down to join that, but he didn't particularly work for Young. He, he went into real estate on his own briefly, and then it all ended. So then, then they started Flamingo Grows with the, the, friend, the Rays. Okay, thank you. Um, we had a question about mangoes in general. Maybe someone from the Historical Society can help us. When do the when do mangoes ripen and can they be purchased? Mangoes usually ripen in June, but depending on the variety, there are some as late as July and September. So um, the one that's on the Hammerstein property, I believe, is going to start ripening in June. And the, the problem with the tree is it's so old and high you can't get to the mangoes. And they, when they ripen, they fall off the tree and smash into a million pieces. Hopefully nobody's standing under the tree during ripening season because they're very large mangoes. Um, so that's why Fairchild has their mango festival in June because most of the mangoes are ripening at that time. On the front page when, when uh, Hammers, Mr. Hammerstein died and the next day at the front page of the, of the Sun Tatler was the mango king has passed away. It was remarkable for me to see how beautifully the Hollywood Historical Society came together to produce this film together. It's really, um, it's really inspiring to see the group really take such a, a special interest in the house. Do we love the house and we, we got, the entire board got together and had a major cleanup because the house had been closed for so long and we thought about getting a cleaning company and we decided that it would be a great team building for us all to get in that house and get our hands dirty with vacuum cleaners and mops and, and we really got to know the house even better. And I, I think what's special about this house is not only the architect Baird Lukens, but there aren't many if any, homes in Hollywood that were built in the 30s that are 100% completely original inside and out. They just don't exist, down to the original furniture of the occupants. It is going into a time capsule. So if you want to go see a time capsule and see how a house was lived in, in in the 30s, there it is, right there, perfectly preserved. And we are very lucky and fortunate to be able to be the caretakers of that home. And I think Hammer Clarence wanted that for the house. He knew the house was special and that's why he donated it to the city. Had he sold it or it was sold on his death, who knows what it, the house would have just been completely gutted, rehab, possibly even torn down. Um, it's nice that we still have it as a resource in our city, as a historic resource. What's the story with those twin beds? Oh, everybody had twin beds. Everyone did, Joan? Really? Oh, yes. In the 20s and 30s, and you'd see the old movies, and they all had twin beds. They didn't, because 
old, old fashioned with double beds, little tiny double beds. So this was the latest thing in the 20s and 30s. I always thought that like when you watched I Love Lucy, they just did it for the censor. I didn't think oh, we no. <laughs> had separate and that they were pretty far apart. Those yeah, with a little table in between. <laughs> I'm sure some married people would love that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, anyway, are there any other questions? Okay, well. Um, someone, was asked, someone was asking if a trust supports the house. Victor, can you answer that? Um, it's private donations. Private donations. So it's owned by the um, city. What's that, Dr. Jones? Isn't it owned by the city? Yes. Um, yes, it's owned by the city. And there is a $1 uh, a, a year charge for the rent. But um, uh, a lot of people do make private donations to the Historical Society. And we have fundraisers. And also, Ham did leave several charities uh, in his will. And the Hollywood Historical Society was one of them. Where the money went, I don't know. Maybe the city uh, took possession of it. And there's a question about what size lot. I believe it's a, either 75 or 100 foot wide lot. It's a it's a decent size lot. Isn't it three lots? It's, you know, Young had them laid out as 50 foot lots. I think it's three. They bought three lots. They were living in the building next door, which is still there to the west. So if it's three lots, it would be 150 feet wide right, yeah. by about 132 deep. So it's a very nice piece of yeah. property. Behind it is our research center. If any of you want to come and see the house for real, our research center is right, right in the back of it. Is this the only house that's preserved like this in Hollywood? I, I, there was one other home that was just like this, and it was actually the same architect. It was another Bayard Lukens, and stay tuned because our lecture next month will be all about Bayard Lukens. So it's nice that we're doing this now. Um, it was 1555 Bayard Lukens. It was an incredible two-story house that was completely original inside as well. I mean, everything, it had four bathrooms. The servant bells worked still. The, the little shiny chrome button that you press and then the thing would pop up telling you what room was calling still worked. The original gas range, 1937 five pin gas range was still in the home and the homeowner used it. The original tile on the countertop. It just got sold and they've been gutting the interior as we speak. So it's, we do have a lot of, there is a handful of Baird Lucan's homes in the Lakes neighborhood, but most of them, if not all of them, do not have any in, original integrity at all, which that's the piece de la resistance for me is to have the inside and the outside presence. You get to see the outside, but now you get to see the inside. I don't think there's any other houses. Joe Young's house on Hollywood Boulevard has some original features, but the kitchens and bathrooms and everything have been gutted. Clive, is that the yellow house that you were yes. talking about? Yes. What struck me also was that the house isn't ostentatious. It's not like what you would expect, like in Palm Beach or wherever. It's um, it, it, it's somewhat simple in a, in a good way, in an elegant way, but it's not really that fancy. Is it right. just my, my eyes in 2021 looking at it or for the time, was it ostentatious or, you know? I don't, I don't think it was, but I don't think Hollywood was like Palm Beach and it didn't have that kind of money in, in Hollywood. So I think, you know, when you get out of Hollywood, you had areas like Miami Beach and Palm Beach that had more money and people built, I think, bigger houses. And you think but that's it was correct, 1935, John? that's the middle of the depression. Right. So, and it was state of the art. It was obviously a beautiful home at the time. Yeah, no, beautiful it was, but it wasn't just like, you didn't see a lot of, it's not what I would call a fancy home. Yeah. But beautiful. When it, inside it had, as Peg pointed out, all those closets and details that most houses didn't have. Our, my house was built, my family's in 35, and we didn't have anything like the interiors that they had. Mm -hmm. I think it was upscale. <laughs> okay, well, um, 
This was amazing, uh, so interesting. Uh, again, what I'm struck by was just the camaraderie of the Hollywood Historical Society's board. And um, you're inspiring all of us to, at least the friends of the library, we want to get together and have a drink, maybe at the Hammerstein House one day. Um, so Karen, do you have some last words before we close today's program? Karen, you're on mute. No, I just want to thank everybody for coming and um, try to enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. And don't forget June 13th, Mary Beth Busatel will talk about more of the Baird Lucan's homes, which were quite amazing back in the back in the day. So also, thank you everybody for coming. Also, um, before that lecture, I was lucky enough to get into 1555 Hollywood Boulevard, and I do have a little video of the interior of the house that will show, it'll be up on our website or Facebook page before the Bayard Lukens lecture to get people interested in Bayard Lukens architecture. At least we got to document it before they ripped everything out of there. It was on our home tour once. Yes, it was on the home tour probably, I want to say 15 years ago, maybe longer. I was in it when they had an open house, um, or maybe maybe the realtor took me, I forget, but I knew I wasn't interested in buying it. I just wanted to see the inside. It's, it is amazing. Yeah. Incredible. And the Hammersteins, Joan will tell you, she was probably there, uh, had a, an open house on Christmas every single year. It was their ago. wedding uh, anniversary. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, we are very fortunate that we got to see this very special tour. Thank you all for attending. And we'll see you a month from now, if not sooner at some of our library programs. And thanks again uh, to the Hollywood Historical Society for being really an incredible partner to the Friends of the Library. Thank you very much. Bye. Enjoy Thank the you. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.